Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our second session of our University of Western States Chiropractic Workshop Week. We're thrilled to have you here today. My name is Brigan Arnett, um, and I'm an admissions advisor for our Doctor of Chiropractic program. In this afternoon's session, you'll be hearing from Bola Maje Kobaje, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at UWS. She'll be followed by Sierra Negron, um, Director of Financial Aid, and I will be our last speaker today presenting about the Doctor of Chiropractic admission requirements and application deadlines. I'll also take you on a virtual tour of campus at the end of our session today so you can get a feel for what our campus looks like. We anticipate this session being between 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, it will be recorded for those that couldn't attend today, um, or if you have to leave early for any reason, you can come back to it. All six of our chiropractic workshop week sessions will be added to our website in the next week or so, so everybody can view them. If you have any questions for the presenters today, please feel free to utilize the Q&A chat function at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and we will answer your questions live or via chat or email you after the session. Um, as long as you formally register for the session, we'll have your email on file. Otherwise, we'll just try to answer it um, as you ask them. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce you all to our first presenter, um, Bola Maje Kobaje. Um, Bola has more than 10 years of experience leading diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts in the Pacific Northwest. Um, she spent quite some time at um, Washington, Washington State University, Vancouver, so not too far from the UWS campus, and we're thrilled to have her here on campus. Um, outside of, or before starting her role at UWS, Bola served as an executive director for a conservation non-governmental organization in the Republic of Palau. And she's quite passionate about racial justice, being an ally, building climate resilience um, in indigenous and island communities. So without further ado, um, welcome Bola. Thank you so much, Bregan. And we can go ahead and go to the next slide. I just am so thankful for the folks who are on this call as you kind of think about the next steps in your career and uh, really appreciate you thinking about University of Western States as a place um, that you might want to spend the next um, portion of that journey. Um, some of you may not be familiar with the Portland area. And so I wanted to start just quickly with a land acknowledgement. University of Western States is physically located in Portland, Oregon in Multnomah County. We respectfully acknowledge and honor the indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homes we stand on, the Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Watlala Bands of the Chinook, the Tualatin Kalapuya, and many other indigenous nations of the Columbia River. Despite attempts of removal and erasure, indigenous nations, communities, groups, organizations, and individuals remain a strong and vital part of this region. UWS recognizes that this acknowledgement is a small step in affirming the ongoing presence and contributions of native communities. We commit to engaging with these communities by expanding access to the university, supporting current students and employees, building partnerships with local tribes and organizations, and increasing access to quality healthcare. Thanks so much. And we can go to the next slide. And my part of uh, this presentation is, is really just to, to talk about um, UW, UWS and specifically its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the reason why we are committed to DEI is really for students. We want you as a prospective student, as a potential student to learn and grow as a professional in a place that affirms who you are, your background, the way you exist in the world, and all the identities and the experiences that you bring to UWS. And we want to create that culture where those identities and experiences are valued. I think very importantly, um, to related to the training of becoming a chiropractor, we want students to feel prepared and confident to provide culturally responsive care. We all know that you know, the United States is changing, Canada is changing, the world is changing just in terms of the diversity. Um, and um, we want our students to feel really confident to treat anyone who, who walks through, through their door um, in a way that, um, again, affirms who they are and um, uh, provides the type of care that they need. Um, and then I think just from a, you know, uh, in terms of just, you know, human rights, we want to expand the, the reach of our health programs. We, we provide a number of health programs at UWS, specifically around chiropractic. I think um, many of you know that chiropractor, chiropractic is not well known in all communities. And um, while that might 
be seen as something negative. I think it's a huge opportunity to introduce chiropractic care to communities um, who haven't thought about receiving um, that type of uh, care um, previously. And so a lot, of, a lot of opportunities when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. If we go to the next slide, um, I wanted to talk a bit about what you can expect as a student at University of Western States. Um, you can expect that DEI be reflected in our institutional priorities and values. Um, you can definitely expect um, that uh, you will experience um, a learning posture. And what do I mean by that? Um, just that idea that, you know, we're all on this journey towards cultural competence, you know. Um, some of us haven't thought about this very much. Some of us have thought a lot about it. And uh, at, here at UWS, we want to create a space where you know, everyone is welcome to engage in these conversations and that uh, we really don't believe in this idea of guilt or shame when it comes to discussing issues of DEI. You can expect to learn and work with faculty and students from a variety of backgrounds um, and that diversity, equity, and inclusion will be integrated in uh, courses and in the curriculum. If you can go to the next slide. You can also expect experiential learning opportunities. Um, I know that a lot of students um, participate in compassion events where they, they go into the community and they work with, with folks um, who may not have access to health care. Um, students experience professional development opportunities, leadership opportunities. Um, they have opportunities to really get involved with their campus and to give back. And um, I think regardless of who you are, um, our students um, I hope and I think feel that support from faculty, staff, and of course their peers. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, again, my, my portion was really, really short, but um, I'm just really happy to be before you. And as you consider, you know, again, your next steps in your career, hope that you'll consider UWS as a place um, where you can really call home as you, as you think about those next steps, um, and especially related to becoming a chiropractor. So with that, I will turn it over back to you, Brigham. Thank you so much, Bola. Um, really appreciate your presentation. And um, I hope everybody feels comfortable and confident and wants to come to school here. That's something that's really important. If you have any questions, now is a great time to utilize that Q&A chat. If you have anything specific that you want to ask Bola or pick her brain um, about any um, anything specific, go ahead and type that in that Q&A chat function. And I'm happy to answer those questions. I'll give you guys just a, you know, half a minute or so. And if not, we will move on to our um, financial aid portion of our presentation. And of course, if you think of something later, We'll answer it later. If it doesn't, if it's not right this second, we can always answer it later. All right, Bola, you're really concise. We have no questions, so <laughs> that's great. Um, we'll keep an eye on that Q&A chat in case anyone does have questions. So um, the next portion of our presentation will be given by Sierra Negron. She is our um, Director of Financial Aid. Sierra has over 20 years of experience working in higher education and about 10 years of experience working in financial aid. Sierra works fully remote for UWS and she's located in Connecticut. Um, we didn't mention this earlier, but UWS is located in Portland, Oregon. So we are... Um, several thousand miles apart, but we're really grateful to have Sierra here with us today. So without further ado, um, I'll turn it over to Sierra. Thank you so much. Um, welcome everyone. And I'm going to try to be as simple and fast as I can um, with knowing that if you have any questions, you can call the office. So let's get started. If we can go to the next slide. I wanna talk briefly about some scholarships that our university offers. Um, the first few scholarships are Career Change Scholarship, the Dean Scholarship, Diversity and Healthcare Scholarship, and the Agenda and Healthcare Scholarship. If you go to our website at www.uws.edu under the Admission tab, you go to Financial Aid and you'll go um, to Scholarships and you'll see the application available there for all these scholarships. I want to make sure that you know that these scholarships deadline will be August 5th of 2022. So you still have time. Make sure that um, you skim, you know, go through them. Um, they do require an essay. Um, each one has a different question that you would have to answer. And the amounts vary based on the scholarship and the details are in our website. 
Um, we also offer the DC Prerequisite Science Scholarship. That one, you do not need to apply. That scholarship is specifically for students who need an organic chemistry or a biochemistry course to qualify for admissions. Um, the scholarship is uh, will be applied to your first term tuition upon matriculating to the DC program. And the amount, the award amount will match the direct cost of tuition fees and lab equipment for the prerequisite course. This is automatically done so you don't have to do any additional documenta you know, documentation or application. If you have any questions regarding this particular scholarship, you could definitely contact the admissions office and they will discuss it with you. Um, on the next slide, um, I wanted to let you know that those scholarships that I just mentioned are available to all our students in the DC program. Now, in this slide, we're gonna talk specifically about federal aid for our domestic students. I wanna make sure that you um, know that for us to consider you for any federal aid, we use just one application, which is the free application of federal student aid, or as many people know it, the FAFSA. Please make sure that when you are applying to the FAFSA, that you are completing the 2022-2023 FAFSA year. You would have to fill out this application every year. The application becomes available on October 1st. So just keep in mind that if you become someone that decides last minute to do your FAFSA on October 1st, it will move over to the next academic year. So be very careful on the academic year that you're choosing. So if you're going to be starting this coming fall, you wanna make sure that is a 2022, 2023. Your financial aid award letter will be sent to you and um, via my financial aid portal. Um, I'm very excited to let our students know that we are trying to do a lot of self-service for our students. And we will be emailing you once your award is available with your web ID number to be able to log in and instructions. And you'll be able to access your financial aid, any missing documents, uh, and much more in the future, all from the comfort of your home at any time. Obviously, if you have any questions, we could definitely be an assistance for you, but you also have the information available to you. Some funds that I want to discuss are going to be specific to federal aid, which is once you fill out the FAFSA, you will be considered for an unsubsidized loan, which is a graduate um, loan that is offered to all our students that fill out a FAFSA and are eligible. The reason I say eligible is because you have to have a FAFSA, you have to have submitted all your documentation and the amount is based on your program. As long as you have not borrowed an excess of, if you have not borrowed $225,000 in federal student loans, which I hope you have not, <laughs> you will be eligible for an unsubsidized direct loan as long as you are enrolled at least half time. So even if you make a lot of money, don't worry, fill out your FAFSA. This is a resource for you. Um, you could also apply for a graduate plus loan in addition to an unsubsidized loan. A lot of our DC students like to apply for graduate plus loan for living expenses. So we could discuss that on an individual basis um, and information will be sent out to you regarding your cost of attendance so you could see how much you could apply for your living expenses. And we also offer a federal work study program for students that might want to reduce their loan debt and prefer to work on campus and earn some federal funds. The federal work study program is a need-based aid program. So we would, you would have to be eligible. Anybody who's interested could contact the financial aid office. We do give first um, priority to the students who already have a job and we will be having a wait list for any new student. And as jobs become available, we will be notifying students. Wanna make sure that when you apply for the FAFSA, I want you to use the federal school code 012309. If you forget this number, no worries. You could actually just put University of Western States in the search box and it will pop up. We could go to the next slide. Um, we also wanted to let our students know that Canadian students that are in the DC program, we offer a DC Canadian exchange rate scholarship. This provides a maximum of 20% of a tuition reduction. This is combined with our international scholarship. If you are a, Can a Canadian resident 
and you are matriculated in the DC program, you will qualify for this and we will be applying this to your account. Just keep in mind that it is only a maximum of 20% tuition reduction um, and you will see that in your billing statement. International scholarships that we offer for all international students, it's a thousand dollar grant per term. You wanna make sure that you maintain a minimum GPA of 2.5, which that should be a piece of cake. I am confident in that. You have to be enrolled full time and be matriculated in the DC program. Next slide, please. Um, our international, um, we do have some international aid. Um, specifically, I wanna talk about my Canadian students. For students from Canada, they can apply for their Canadian aid to be used at UWS. You would have to apply through your providence or territory. If you are looking maybe in the future to um, re you know, dually enroll in an online program, just be mindful that as of today, Canada does not cover any online programs. When we fill out the paperwork for you, the, um, we will be covering four terms at a time starting in August. So your Canadian paperwork would have to be filled out prior to any August start. So you wanna make sure you start working on that as soon as possible, as we have no control on how long Canada can take in processing the documents. However, any documentation that we need to fill out, we will immediately fill it out as soon as we receive it. UWS does not determine your eligibility. We just fill out the paperwork to make sure that they know that you are matriculated, which program you are going to be in. And every term they will send a registration confirmation form to our office that cannot be uh, filled out to after the ad drop period, but we will fill it out as long as we get the documentation. I wanna make sure that you know that our school code for this documentation is MWLM. And the program code for the DC program is TA17. Um, I know that it's probably a lot of information, but if you have any questions, just feel free to give us a call in our office, um, or you can email us at finaid at UWS. That's probably the best way, because if you forget the answer, you could always Google, um, search your email, and we'll get back to you. Um, I am more than glad to answer any questions. Um, if you have any specific questions that might be personal, um, we could always do that over the phone or via email to make sure that I'm not answering it live. <laughs> That's it for my part, and I'll wait for any questions. Thanks so much, Sierra. So just so you're all aware, I just sent the financial aid email address to all of you um, so that you're able to see that. So fine aid at uws.edu. Um, Sierra can get back to you or somebody on her team. If you have any specific financial aid questions, whether it's financial aid, provincial aid, um, any other type of aid or scholarship questions, now's a great time to put that in the chat. Um, oh, perfect. And Sierra just sent the financial aid phone number as well. Um, we had that on one of the slides, but it was like four slides ago. <laughs> So yes. please feel free to take a picture or a screenshot or whatever you need of um, that phone number, that email, Sierra can get back to you. Um, I don't see any questions pouring in quite yet, but I'll keep an eye on it. Um, if that's the case, then I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. We'll keep an eye on that Q&A chat. Um, the next part of our presentation is about admissions requirements and I'm gonna be the one speaking to you next. So just to kind of, informally, formally introduce myself. I'm Bregan Arnett. Um, I've been working in higher education for about six years. I finished my undergraduate work um, at Brigham Young University in Idaho, and then I moved to Ohio <laughs> uh, to finish my graduate work at Cleveland State University. I'm originally from Vancouver, Washington, so about 10 minutes with no traffic north of Portland, Oregon, um, and we're excited to have moved from the eastern part of the Midwest back back home. This is home to, um, to my family, so it's fun to be back. Um, before I get started, I'm going to kick off with some polls to try to wake everybody up and um, make it, I don't know, a little bit more engaging. So let's start with our first poll. I want to ask you guys how you heard about UWS. So I'm going to give you guys just a few seconds to a minute. It's not going to take too long um, for you to just answer one of these questions. A 
Okay, I'll give you like five more seconds. It looks like most people here have already voted. <laughs> so um, here we go. So nobody has a friend at UWS. <laughs> Everybody heard about UWS from their chiropractor or the internet. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool for me to know. I'm gonna ask you one more question now and then um, we'll do some more later. What makes you most excited about UWS? We're gonna we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit too. And we have more sessions throughout the loop that might, I don't know, teach more things about why to be excited, but I wanted to see what you guys are thinking. All right, give you guys like five more seconds. Looks like almost everyone has voted. All right. And here are our results. Again, not so much on those second two, but 50-50% um, and half of you are here for the hands-on chiropractic ex experience and learning from distinguished faculty and clinicians, which is really exciting. Um, awesome, that is perfect. I do see one question in our Q&A. I want to get to that. Oh, just kidding. It's not there anymore. <laughs> We're all set. Let's go ahead and move on. So I just wanna give you guys a quick little timeline about University of Western States and kind of what's happened over the last hundred and something years since we became an institution. So in 1904, um, we were founded. We are the second oldest chiropractic college in the world. If you fast forward to 1981, that's when we had our first programmatic accreditation um, for the chiropractic program by the CCE, the Council on Chiropractic Education, which is a requirement um, for students to practice as chiropractor. You have to go to a school that's licensed by or accredited by CCE. Um, in 1986, UWS had a regional accreditation for the entire university by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities. Um, and then we can continued to grow and expand um, in popularity um, from there. Um, in 2010, we added an online master's degree in exercise and sports science. In 2012, an online master's in nutrition and functional medicine. In 2015, that exercise and sports science degree changed its name to a master of science in sports medicine, which I'm going to briefly talk about a little bit later. Um, in 2020, we moved into a brand new, beautiful, state-of-the-art campus and clinic. Um, we moved into the campus at the beginning of 2020 and then COVID hit. So the campus is, um, had a lot less foot traffic than we originally anticipated when we first built it. And it is in pristine condition. It's absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend coming to Portland, checking out the campus, taking a tour, and we can talk about how to do that later. And then fast forwarding to next year in 2023, UWS will be launching a brand new Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine degree. Um, it will be starting next October. So just to kind of put that on your radar out there. Um, all righty. Oh, sorry, my computer is just being slow. Come on, there it goes. So why choose chiropractic at UWS? There's a lot of chiropractic colleges out there. They're all fantastic. Um, but some things that kind of stand out with UWS is we are the second oldest chiropractic program in the world. We have an, an incredible reputation for training world-class world chiropractic physicians who practice all around the world. So not just in the US and Canada, um, but throughout the world as well. We're located in beautiful green and gray Portland, Oregon. Um, and there's incredible year round activities. If you're an outdoor person, this is a really great place to be. We have hands-on training in our program. Um, during our chiropractic program, you'll be participating in clinical observation, hands-on training with clinical experts. Um, and you'll be working with diverse populations of peoples um, who are here in the Portland area, which is really exciting. We have some concurrent master's degree um, options that you can take. I mentioned two of them at the beginning. I'm going to mention again, our master's in sports medicine and our master's in human nutrition and functional medicine. Those are really exciting degrees and they'll allow you to kind of hone in on your chiropractic skills um, in a very specific way. So for example, if you're wanting to treat patients with injuries, 
that sports medicine or like athletic, excuse me, everyone has injuries, but like athletic type injuries, a master's in sports medicine might be a really great fit for you. And about a third of those credits already have been taken in the chiropractic program. So you're already about a third of the way to a master's in sports medicine when you're earning your DC degree anyway. So that's a really popular degree for a lot of our chiropractic students. Our nutrition and functional medicine degree is also really fantastic if you're wanting to learn some functional medicine approaches to healthcare and patient treatment and things like that. And then our doctor of naturopathic medicine, this one, it will not be a concurrent degree, um, but our chiropractic students will be able to shave some time off of that naturopathic medicine degree. And that is coming next fall, October of 2023. We will have many more details about this on our website come this summer. Um, since all the final details are being ironed out about this degree. We're so excited. We have an integrated approach to healthcare. UWS students are educated in diagnosing, um, adjusting skills, um, physiological ther um, therapeutics, rehabilitation, nutrition, and lifestyle management. We're gonna teach you just about everything um, that we possibly can teach you um, so that you have a whole tool bag of things to treat patients because no patient is the same as the other, right? We don't wanna use the same thing for every patient. We wanna make sure that you have, are well-trained in um, not only spinal adjusting, but extremity adjusting, um, laser soft tissue work, um, just as much as we possibly can so that you can bring the most treatment and the most care to the most diverse um, patient population. And then lastly, we have an incredible evidence-informed curriculum and education. Our comprehensive DC curriculum is evidence-informed and we really focus on a whole person approach to healthcare and an individualized approach um, per person. Um, just to kind of look at a prerequisite overview, and we're gonna dive into this a little bit deeper, but we require that you have at least three years of college level coursework. So that's gonna be 90 semester credits or 135 quarter credits, depending on if your college is on a semester or a quarter system. You must have a 3.0 out of those three years of college. From that um, 90 credits or 135 credits, we wanna see 24 semester or 36 quarter credits in the sciences with a few very specific classes in the Nat and Phys and in chemistry. Half of your science classes must include a lab. The way we calculate lab is let's say you take a four credit or let's say a three credit chem with a one credit lab. So three credit lecture, one credit lab. We will count all four of those credits for chemistry and for lab. So it makes it a little bit more doable to get up to that 12 or 18 credits when we count the entire lecture and lab together. Our basic science requirements, the absolute basic requirement is everything must be at least 100 level. We want at least one course in each science area, but we highly recommend going beyond that basic 100 level, taking at least 200, 300 level science courses and a full year sequence of each course if possible. So maybe biology one and two and microbiology one and two, maybe chem one and two, organic chemistry one and two. To, you know, dive deeper into those science classes to better prepare yourself for the DC curriculum. Um, we prefer to see science major courses um, in pre-medical or pre-healthcare track type courses, as opposed to um, biology for non-science majors. We prefer to see that for a science major, if that makes sense. So the hard required classes we're looking for are two classes of anatomy and physiology. So six semester credits or eight quarter credits of anat and phys. Um, all of these classes will count. So anat and phys one and two with labs will count, human anatomy alone, exercise physiology, all of those types of classes will count under the, um, the A&P category. We also require at least one class. So three semester credits or four quarter credits in chemistry. So that can be chem one and two, organic chem, biochem. If you took P-chem, great. <laughs> we just want to see some chemistry classes there. The more advanced, the better, but at least one chemistry course. Um, we highly recommend, kind of like I mentioned, taking advanced chemistry, advanced biology, physics, physics and kinesiology courses. These are things that are only going to prepare you better and better um, for the DC curriculum when you come to chiropractic school. So all of these classes are fantastic. I understand not every degree is going to include every single one of these classes, um, but these are just really great things to have. If you've already taken general biology, maybe move on to microbiology or a cellular biology course, see if you can take a physics or a kinesiology or a biomechanics class, because those are all be really um, beneficial to you when you start um, the curriculum. We also love to see in your total three years, so your total 90 credits, 135 quarter credits, um, 
We love to see some humanities and social science classes. We don't have a hard set number of these classes, but all of these different subjects um, count as a humanities or as a social science. Um, and again, we'd love to see these in your, in your transcript when you, when you apply to the school here. Um, so that being said, I'm gonna take um, a couple more polls. So let's go to the next poll. I'm curious, what is your major in undergrad? I'll give you guys just a few seconds to fill those out. Okay, great. Looks like just about everybody's voted. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, nope, not everybody's voted. I'm sorry. I'll give you guys like just a few more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share this with all of you. Um, interesting. So we definitely have a mixed group of people here. Um, we have some biology majors, kinesiology, exercise science. Some of you are doing um, a major in humanity or social science. We have one person who says they're planning to get their bachelor's degree with UWS. And that is an option that we have for students who um, have not already received, received their bachelor's degree. What we'll do when you apply to UWS, you have to send us your transcripts. We will be looking um, for all of those specific classes that I just mentioned. We'll be looking for the 3.0 GPA. We'll be looking for three years of college. Um, if you meet all of those requirements and the U.S. Department of Education requirements for a bachelor's degree in human biology, you'll be able to receive a bachelor's degree in human biology with us after your fifth quarter. So after the first quarter of your second year, um, you can apply for that. Um, so that we, did, we take on a case-by-case -case basis um, for students who have not already completed their bachelor's degree before entering with UW. So that's kind of a cool option. If you wanna finish your degree at your school, awesome, do it, please do. I think the majority of our students do that, but some of our students want to come to chiropractor school a year early and not finish their bachelor's degree at their current institution. And that's fine. We can um, offer that bachelor's degree here. So you're not missing out on a bachelor's degree at the end of the day. And then last poll before I move on is I kind of want to know where everybody's located since we're all over the place. Um, Bola and myself are I believe Bula is on campus today. She's in Portland. I'm in Washington State, just over the river. <laughs> and Sierra is over many rivers <laughs> in Connecticut. So I'm just kind of curious to see where everybody is today. Okay. We'll go ahead and end our poll. Looks like, oh, sorry, let me share it so you guys can see it. <laughs> um, it looks like we're mostly West Coasters today and a few folks in the Mountain West. Interesting, usually when we um, have these polls, we have a massive amount of Canadian students. So um, we'll make sure this is recorded and that anybody is able to see this later, um, but kind of interesting to see where you're, um, where, where we are logging in from today. All right, I digress. Let's talk about the rest of the requirements here. Um, just a couple additional notes. Like I just mentioned, students can earn their bachelor's degree, uh, bachelor, bachelor of Science degree in Human Biology after their fifth quarter in the DC program. You are welcome to apply to one of our online master's degree programs. We have more than just those two in sports medicine and human nutrition and functional medicine, but these are the most common for our chiropractor students. We have degrees in sport and performance psychology, clinical and mental health counseling, um, things like that, but they're not as common for our, our DC students to take those programs, but just so you know that they're, they're available. Um, and students can apply for a master's degree after you've completed your bachelor's. So that's why we usually recommend starting in your fifth or sixth quarter with a master's degree. In case you hadn't already finished a bachelor's, you'll have the bachelor's finished by that time. Um, but it's usually around the start of your second year or a quarter into your second year is when you can pick up one of those master's degrees. Um, you can apply to our DC program before finishing all the prerequisite requirements, which is great news. I have students ask me that all the time. They'll say, Brigham, uh, I'm still taking a and P two. I'm still taking my second my second semester or second quarter of A and P. Can I still apply or do I have to wait till it's finished? The answer is go ahead and apply. Um, we would love for you to apply on the early side as opposed to the later side. Um, and that's just fine. As long as you've completed at least 70 semester credits, which is 105 quarter credits, you can start your application with us, even if you don't meet that three years quite yet. As long as you have at least the 70 or the 105, whatever system your school is on, some semesters or quarters, you're welcome to apply with us. Um, what we can do um, is we can, 
issue was called a conditional acceptance letter for students who met, who are doing great, but not quite there. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you are more than welcome to submit that application to us um, as you are still working on prereqs. So let's talk about the application, then we'll dive a little bit deeper into that, what I just mentioned. Um, so in your application, we're going to need transcripts, official transcripts from every institution you've attended. That might seem tedious, but we do need to see every school you've attended. So even if you attended a handful of community college classes in high school and you got college credit for them, we will need that in addition to wherever you're taking current classes. We require two essays. Um, the essay questions are between 250 and 500 words long, so they're not terribly long. Um, but one essay is about your personal statement and your career goals. You know, why chiropractic? Why UWS? Questions like that. Your second essay is about volunteer experiences and ec extracurricular, extracurricular activities um, that you've experienced and kind of what you've learned from them. We require two letters of recommendation. Your um, references can come from professionals or academic side. Um, so past or current um, colleagues, professors, supervisors, anybody like that, that's just fine. Can't be just a family friend or a family member, as long as it's someone who can talk about you in a professional capacity. We require a resume or a CV and a $50 application processing fee. Once all of that's in, and your advisor, me, or whoever your advisor is, I'll introduce all of them in a minute, um, has reviewed your application and we've reviewed your transcripts. So we've said, yes, this person meets the requirements. We will move you on to an interview. If you receive an interview, you'll be meeting with um, Dr. Pat Brown. He's one of our VPs for the School of Chiropractic. Um, I believe he does almost all the interviews. <laughs> um, you'll get a chance to meet him. He's fantastic. Um, those interviews last usually about an hour, 40 minutes to an hour, just to kind of have a conversation, get to know you better, see if you'd be a good fit um, for our chiropractor program, for our curriculum. Um, after that interview, you usually hear in about a week or two about your um, admission decision. And then from there, if you are admitted, um, you'll want to submit a $300 tuition deposit, which holds your spot in your cohort, whether that's um, fall or winter or whenever you're looking to apply. And um, allows you to register for classes. We actually have an advisor, an academic advisor who will sign all of our chiropractor students up for classes. So you don't have to go and try to manage your own schedule, but your tuition deposit allows that person to then schedule the classes for you, if that makes sense. So let's say you finish your interview, your Zoom interview, everything looks good, but you haven't finished that second and that phys class or maybe you're just a couple credits shy of 90. What'll happen is if everything still looks good, we're happy to still um, issue you what's called a conditional acceptance letter. Um, meaning you've been admitted to the school, you can submit your deposit, you can sign up for classes, you can join our Facebook groups for each incoming co cohort. Um, but the condition of your acceptance letter is that you must finish um, your outstanding materials by the deadline. And I'm going to show you what those deadlines are. So if you're looking to start in fall of 2022, for example, this upcoming fall, um, the priority application deadline is in like two weeks. It's May 1st. The hard final deadline is July 15th. Now, August 1st is our deposit deadline and prerequisite deadline. I apologize. I should have probably wrote prerequisites in there. But prerequisites are always due six weeks before classes start. So um, or in this case, it's a little more than that. But anyhow, August or October 3rd is when um, classes will officially start. And we want to have that deposit in. And if possible, all of those um, prerequisites done by August 1st. Now, if you are currently taking a Nat and Phys 2 or a biochemistry class or something this summer, and you know it's not going to finish until September, make sure to communicate that with your advisor. Um, we're happy to make a note of that for you. You won't be penalized for that if you're in the middle of a class and we have a hard end date for you. Um, what we don't wanna have happen is you're in class, the deadline passes, and we have no idea that you're in class because you never communicated with us. That would create more of an issue than you saying up front, hey, my last anatomy and Fist class is gonna end you know, September 3rd, one month before the deadline. That's fine. Just be very communicative with us. Once you finish that final, prerequisite or whatever you're missing, we update you from a conditional admit to a full admit, meaning you're fully admitted to the program. We're not waiting on anything for you anymore. So that's kind of what it's looking like for this upcoming fall. If you're looking to start in the winter of 23, classes will begin in January. You're going to want to apply by October 1st. 
November 1st at the very latest, but we would prefer October 1st, please. And then your deposit deadline slash prerequisite deadline is six weeks prior, more or less, November 15th, okay? Um, these are our admission advisors for our doctor of chiropractic team. So Natasha French works with all of our international students. Um, Stephen Glass works with all of our students outside of Oregon, um, all of our American students, domestic students outside of Oregon. And I am Brigan, and I work with all of our domestic students in Oregon. So this is a great time to take out your phone or take a screenshot or whatever um, and get our contact information. Because if you do have questions, if you do want us to review your transcript, I want you to make sure you send it to the right person and that you start building that rapport and that relationship with your advisor, because we are absolutely here um, to kind of help you along that entire admission process. That's what we're here for. So I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, I'm going to show you guys a video, a little campus tour. This is four to five minutes long. Um, if for some reason you can't hear it, please send me something. I believe I shared my computer sound with everybody, um, but they're going to take you on a quick little tour of our campus. Um, and if you have questions, go ahead and start putting them in that Q&A chat now. And then when the video wraps up, I will answer any questions you guys have. Okay. So let's watch this. Hi, my name is Taya, and I'm a chiropractic student here at University of Western States. Currently, I'm standing outside of the admissions office here located at our new campus in East Portland. And I'm Caitlin. Also a doctor of chiropractic student, as well as a sports medicine master student. Um, as Taya mentioned, we're here in East Portland at our new campus, which is located around a bunch of great amenities. There's a lot of green walking space, including walking trails, a golf course. We're also located next to public transportation, such as the Max Line, as well as there's a bus stop right outside. As Caitlin mentioned, there's tons of great stuff just located around our new campus, and we'd love to show you around. We are currently in one of our adjusting rooms. This room can be made small or it can be made large depending on the class size. We have brand new features of this room, brand new tables, brand new technology used for our professors and our teaching assistants to help us with hands-on skills ready for us in classes. We've got models and skeletons ready to use so that we can be the best chiropractors we can be. We're here in the Student Assessment Center where we have 16 different rooms where you can work with standardized patients. Working with standardized patients is such an invaluable opportunity because you can hone in on your patient history as well as communication skills before you move on into the next step into the clinic. Here on the second floor is the business office. They'll help you with tuition and payment plans and also the registrar office is located here as well. They'll help you with enrollment and cohort changes. Again, if you need anything with business or registrar, this is where you'll come. We're standing out here in front of our campus store where you can get everything that you need as a student. They've got snacks and sandwiches as well as all the UWS apparel and you can get group discounts on things like chiropractic tables and speeder boards and all the tools that you need as a student. There's also a much needed spinal top which is a full service coffee shop where we get our beans from a local coffee place so that you can get your lattes and coffee and tea. Really, the campus store is where you can get anything that you need as a student. Here we are in the NCMIC Fitness Center, which is 4,000 square feet of new equipment, including bikes, treadmills, free weights, and squat racks. We also have a locker room with daily lockers and showers made available. Overall, this is a great space to get a workout in. We're here in Mount Hood, which is our largest lecture hall on campus. You'll spend most of your first year taking classes in this room, such as anatomy, neurophysiology, and the history of chiropractic. This room is great because it has brand new technology as well as movable furniture for breakout sessions. It's a wonderful learning environment. Here on the first floor of the campus, you'll find the UWS library. You'll have textbooks, artificial and real Bowen models, and the friendly library staff will help you with all your study needs like renting iPads, headphones, whiteboards, and happy lights. Here in the back of the library, we have computers that you can utilize. You also have booths, standing tables, and you have two private rooms for individual and group studies. As you can see, there's lots of space that you can utilize here. We're really lucky at our new campus to have this meditation room where you can come and relax throughout the day. Our architect was wonderful to go ahead and dedicate his artwork to help create a nice mindful space. 
Right now, we are here in the testing center, which is located inside the student services. Student services will provide testing accommodations to those who need it. You can also go to the student services if you need tutoring, counseling, or anything like that, like club information, they're there to help you out. As a student, it's really important to have a good, quiet study space. Here at our new campus, we have 1,800 square feet dedicated just for that. There's a lot of different variety of seating choices. We've got couches as well as standing options and private study cubicles. So whether you come here by yourself or with a group, it's a great place to get work done. Here at UWS, we have two health centers. We have the Campus Health Center and we also have the Health Stream Center. When you reach quarter eight of the chiropractic program, you'll enter into the Campus Health Center. You will work directly with a licensed clinician and you'll work on chiropractic care, rehabilitation, and nutritional counseling. The Health Stream Center is a community-based internship led by Dr. Bill Morrow. Upper quarter students have the opportunity to work in the center to solidify their skills as a chiropractor. Now we're here in the standard process student commons where there's a lot of indoor and outdoor seating as well as the campus store. So students can kind of come together and study, meet up with friends. There's also a lot of microwaves, which as a student, I'm very excited about. So the student commons is just a great place to get together, whether you're studying or it's in between classes. Thanks so much for joining us on the tour of our brand new campus. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to an admission advisor. Or you can reach out to a student ambassador like us. Thanks again for watching and we hope to see you around campus soon. All right, thanks ladies, right? <laughs> I apologize for the little bit of glitchiness. I think my internet is slowing down. Um, if you would like to visit campus, totally check out these, um, this um, email address here and this phone number. Um, those are some fantastic resources. If you want to visit campus, we even have um, a little bit of a voucher uh, for students who are coming more than 60 miles away from Portland to come visit the campus um, for hotel stays and things like that. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful campus, like I mentioned, and we'll show you around the campus itself and do a separate tour of the clinic, um, and it'll be a really great experience. So, um, that is the rest of my presentation. I see that there is a question or two in the Q&A. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the screen share um, and just answer any questions that you guys might have at this point. Um, so give me one second to pull up that Q&A. Um, I'm gonna resend the financial aid phone number so you guys can get that. Um, I have a couple other links that I would love to send you as well. So if you give me one second, I'm gonna drop you both a couple of links. The first one is to the rest of our chiropractic workshop week sessions. We're doing more sessions tomorrow and Thursday. So if there is um, additional classes you wanna to come to, for example, sports medicine and chiropractic, um, anatomy courses at UWS, a student and alumni panel, um, Tomorrow we have a clinic and diagnostic imaging presentation, which will be really cool. If you want to attend any of those, please click the link I just sent. And then if you do want to visit campus, I'm going to send that link to everybody as well, just so you have that with you. All right. And now the Q&A questions. Let me get to these last questions. Okay. Um, so this question says, so we don't need to apply for individual classes. Some will do it for us and line up our schedule. Yes. So you will have an academic advisor who will... Um, sign up all your classes for you. So I'm an admissions advisor. I'll help you through the entire application process, but you'll have a new person once you're admitted and they will sign up the classes for you, which is honestly a blessing. <laughs> There's a lot of classes that you'll be taking in the DC program. So to have somebody who's already done, um, who already knows how to do that scheduling for you um, takes a lot of rest off your plate, in my opinion. So they will sign you all up for everything you need and it'll be great. We don't have to worry about scheduling conflicts or anything. That's a great question. Anybody else have questions that they want to submit here? <laughs> okay. Well, if there's no more questions, um, I just want to thank you all again. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's one more. <laughs> um, does UWS offer an alternative track? By alternative track, do you mean students who don't make a 3.0 and come in under GPA? Is that what you mean by alternate track? If, the, if that's the case, I'll, look, I'll wait for your answer um, or under 25 units, such as part-time. Great question. 
Um, the short answer is no. <laughs> um, the DC program is intended to be full time. You should expect about 40 hour work week essentially on campus as a student. So you'll be on campus a good 30 to 40 hours. Um, the classes are intended to stack on top of each other. They're very much gridlocked. So you'll need to take, you know, um, anatomy one before you can move on to anatomy two or surface anatomy or whatever that may be. Um, everything's very much um, stacked on purpose. We don't have a lot of students who are taking part-time classes because um, some of the classes take are offered once, maybe twice a year, and it's going to take you a long time to catch up to the next time the class is offered. So the majority of our students are taking the schooling full-time. Um, I apologize if I didn't mention this earlier, but it's a total of 12 credit quarters, which comes to three years. We have, we're on a quarter system. So we go four quarters a year for three years for a total of 12 credits. Um, so it's a relatively quick program compared to other types of physician programs that are four years plus four to seven years of residency, right? So it's a three-year program. You come away with your doctor of chiropractic, but most of our students are there full-time. Um, majority of our students are not working. We do have some on-campus student employment that works around your schedule, and I recommend that if you are looking for employment while you're in school, um, but most of our students are not working full-time or on like a part-time track, if that's what you mean. If I didn't answer that, let me know. Um, how early will you know what your schedule looks like to order books? Great question. Um, you can actually look at that now. <laughs> um, I am happy to send you a link to our catalog. Let me do that to you guys uh, really quick. So you can take a look. <laughs> catalog. I believe the chiropractic program catalog starts on page 22. Um, or 21, but let me send this to you guys. Um, so if you click on this link, I just dropped to all of you, um, that that's your schedule. <laughs> that's what you'll be taking for the next um, 12 quarters, essentially. As far as books, you can, there's also a textbook link online that you can click on and look at all of the textbooks that you need. Um, if you want me to email that to you, let me know. Otherwise, again, you can just hop on our website and just type in textbooks. I might be able to find it for you while we're here. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. Anyhow, the short answer is you can look at your schedule now. It will, it's not going to deviate <laughs> very much from what's listed there. Um, and you can start ordering textbooks as, as soon as you're admitted. I mean, um, all right, here we go. I got your textbook list for you just so everyone can have that. Textbook list, it's by program. So make sure you click on Doctor of Chiropractic because this lists all of our degrees. Cool. Any other questions? These are all really good questions. <laughs> this is a great question. So cost of tuition. Um, this might be a great Sierra question, um, but the tuition is roughly $10,000 a quarter. It's, it's a little bit more than that um, times 12 quarters. So that's kind of what you're looking at um, total investment wise. Is there anything else that you want to say for that one, Sierra? I just want to say that in um, our website, when you go, we actually give you the cost of attendance for the academic year. So you'll be able to see how much it is for your first three quarters. Um, you do have, um, you'll see the cost of attendance, which will have your direct cost, which is reflected on what they're going to bill you on your actual bill. But we also take into account um, indirect costs like books, supplies, um, transportation, uh, miscellaneous expense, um, equipment and supplies that you are going to need for the program. So all of that is going to be in your cost of attendance so you could get a better idea of um, what the cost is going to be. And if you have any questions specifically to that, um, you could just email us or call us and we could either set up like a phone, comp, you know, a phone time to call with your best number and phone number, or we could do it via email. That's a great question. I'm gonna see if I can drop you a link as well um, for the total cost of attendance. Here we go, found it for you. Um, but roughly the tuition is a little over 10,000 per quarter and there's a total of 12 quarters, okay? Um, so that link, again, that one's the tuition and fees link. So um, there's a question regarding how much you take out for living expenses each year. In the cost of attendance, we have an average of what our living expenses are for our students. It is for an individual student. However, that doesn't mean you need to borrow for the whole thing. 
it all depends on your personal um, circumstances. You might be living with a roommate, you might be living with a parent, you might be living with a spouse. So all those things taken into account, what kind of resources you may have might be different for every individual student. So the cost of attendance is on an average what our students um, have based on the cost of the Portland area and how much it would cost. So it is specific to Portland for the DC program. Uh, for the online program, we do it based on the national um, um, element. So if you wanted to get into more nitty gritty, we could definitely discuss that on an individual basis and try to find out you know, if you have any VA benefits that might assist with living expenses. Um, are there any other sources that you might be getting? Are you gonna be using federal loans? So the best thing to do is look at the cost of attendance and start from there. And then any questions specific to you, we could answer um, individually. Thank you, Sarah. That's a really great question. All right, any last minute questions? I promised I wanted to keep between 45 and an hour, so I don't wanna keep you guys too much longer. Um, I'll give you guys just a few more seconds to ask any last minute questions. Okay, perfect, you guys. I'm gonna put my contact, my email down here. In case you have any questions for me, um, I've already sent the financial aid um, phone number and email address in that chat. Of course, when we close the Zoom session here in just a minute, um, those will all disappear. So if there's anything that you want, make sure you take a picture of it or write it down. Um, but I just wanna thank you, each of you, again, so much for attending today. Um, it makes our life a lot easier when we prepare a presentation and we have people come. So we're really grateful to have you here. Um, and hopefully you're able to take some great information away about um, UWS's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, financial aid information, admissions information. And again, please feel, reach out, um, feel free to reach out to Bola, Sierra, or myself if you have any specific questions for us. Um, and we hope to see you in some of those following sessions tomorrow and Thursday. Have a great rest of your evening, you guys. Thanks so much for coming. Bye. Bye-bye.